I am going to take you on a journey today. You are going to discover an invisible canyon that stands between you and millions of other people. We are going to build a bridge to cross that canyon and emerge on the other side with a brand new perspective. What happens when everything we call normal is stripped away? March 2020. Do you remember the early months of the pandemic, the confusion, the fear? <laughs> we were launched into the unknown as normal was stripped away, as schools closed, businesses closed, essentially the world closed. Normal was gone, and we became desperate to get it back. October 15th, 1997. You won't remember this day, but this is a day I will never forget. This is the day I was told my son had autism. It was the confirmation that the normal life I expected had been denied. We were launched into the unknown. Normal was gone. And I, just like you, became desperate to try to get it back. Why do we cling to normal? As a mental health counselor, helping people understand what they're going through is normal somehow makes it better. What they're experiencing is this principle known as universality. It simply means that we feel better when we learn we're not alone in our problems or issues. That's why support groups thrive. We find comfort in commonality. During the pandemic, we all lost normal, but we didn't lose our commonality because we lost it together. My son's condition of autism, it threw us out of normal years ago, but we lost it alone, a silent loss unseen by everyone around us. It slowly separated you and me. The canyon began to grow. I lost my sense of belonging, the common life script we were supposed to share. We weren't playing t-ball. We were blazing a trail from one therapy to the next. The emotional roller coaster seemed unending, a mysterious and a continuous grief cycle that penetrated every area of my life. Today, I want to accomplish three things. I want to put a name on this mysterious grief. I want to take you on an emotional journey through the stages, and I want to teach you how to help bridge that canyon between you and millions of others. But I want to start with this. Let me clarify something. My son is one of the greatest treasures of my life. Highlighting the grief is not meant to minimize all of the joys and triumphs. But those joys and triumphs do not change the fact that we grieve. Life itself or the life of our loved one that is not the source of our grief. It really is the loss of the normal script we expected to carry out. My journey is not unique. Let me give you perspective. If you gave every person in the city of New York and the city of Los Angeles combined a developmental disorder, that's how many kids the CDC reports as having that diagnosis. Over 12 million children in our country, one in six kids, I'm definitely not alone. We've all, most of us, have lost someone we love. And we know firsthand that the grief can be overwhelming and the loss, it lasts forever. But this felt different. My son was alive, and, and this grief felt more like a yo-yo bouncing between hope and loss. So I started digging in the world of academic literature, hoping to find something that would explain what I was living through. I wish I could tell you that after all my digging, I found this wonderful grief model that explained everything I was living through, but I didn't. And I was not okay with that. So here's my contribution to the bridge. Let me introduce you to atypical cyclic grief. It is a grief model that I have created to name this mysterious grief and to explain what it's like to walk through it. 
The model has been developed through years of academic research, clinical experience, and personal experience. In 2017, I published a book titled No More Wasting Normal, and it gives a very detailed description of this unique grief. I can't fit all of it in today, but I'm going to give you what I can. Atypical cyclic grief, it's a grief response to a non-finite loss. And what that means is nothing final has happened, like in a death. But that also means that there's no final landing spot for people to know psychologically what to expect or accept for the future. This is what causes the yo-yo between hope and loss. It's also not a one-size-fits-all. People will experience it differently depending on the nature and the severity of the loss. Let me walk you through the stages in a very personal way. When Jacob, my son, was a toddler, it was really hard to pin down exactly what was happening. I mean, most toddlers have meltdowns and are picky eaters. So I wrestled with the idea that something might be wrong. Denial is a slippery slope, especially when children are young and still developing. The diagnosis, it was devastating. And I desperately wanted to believe I could change the script for him. I was determined to help my son beat the odds. I went through bouts of anger. I was angry when, when kids were mean or life felt so unfair. This is not how life was supposed to turn out for him. And when the world seemed unaccepting, or unforgiving of his differences. That familiar path of childhood wasn't our path anymore. We had literally been launched into the unknown. And I was scared and lost, overwhelmed. The meltdowns, <laughs> they would happen all the time and in the worst places. I would feel so helpless and many times embarrassed. Guilt became my constant companion. Either I wasn't doing enough or I was doing too much or I was doing it wrong. I even felt guilty for grieving as if somehow that made me ungrateful for my child because I wanted a normal life for him and for me. Leaving home started to feel more like entering a battle zone, the meltdowns, the judgmental stares, the hurtful things people would say. I had no idea how to join other parents in conversation. They were all bragging about the accomplishments of their kids. That's what parents do. The emotional conflict, it would rage on the inside of me. Every encounter with normal became painful. It was the constant reminder of the canyon that stood between us. It was just easier to stay home and be a cave dweller. Avoiding unnecessary battles at least provided a sliver of reprieve. Every time Jacob would make big gains, it seemed like the other kids had already raised the bar. They were having dance parties and sleepovers, and he had finally learned how to retell a story. The depression, it would roll in like waves, sometimes knocking me off my feet as I struggled to breathe. I vacillated between a renewed sense of hope. <laughs> We're getting closer. Only to experience another loss in the form of an unmet milestone or a regression. There's the yo-yo. Hope, loss, hope, loss. How are you supposed to accept something when the thing is constantly changing? I had no idea. This was different from any grief I had ever experienced. Silent losses 
in the land of plenty. And my story is not unique. If you're living with atypical cyclic grief, you likely recognize these stages through your own journey. Your life has been impacted in ways that are unique to your circumstances. Consider other derailments from normal, like being childless or widowed in your 30s or 40s, or the devastation and yo-yo of addiction, limitations posed by chronic health conditions or mental illness, real losses that cause real pain. Regardless of your individual grief experience, my hope is that today you find comfort in knowing you're not alone. If you've been denied the normal you expected, learning to redefine your own normal and giving it equal value will set you on a much better path. To paraphrase Emily Pearl Kingsley, it would be like planning a trip to Italy and you've waited your whole life to go on this trip, and the day arrives and the plane lands and you hear the announcement, and they say, welcome to Holland. <laughs> Holland? I didn't plan for Holland. But if we spend our entire lives grieving the fact that we didn't make it to Italy, we will miss the beautiful and the lovely things of Holland. I have been given views into this life I would have never seen any other way. The things that matter. I live with someone who would never judge you based on the color of your skin or status or popularity. Mm -mm. He only sees people, all people, all equal. And I think that is beautiful. Don't you? What if I told you that you had the power to create a place where all people could feel accepted and supported? Would you use that power? What if you could restart your thinking? I've shown you the canyon. Now it's time for the bridge. But what if the pandemic has already built a bridge for all of us? One we all crossed together when we lost normal in life-changing ways. A bridge that has gifted you with the ability to empathize, even in the slightest way, what it feels like to lose that familiar life script we call normal. I want to give you two words to help reinforce that bridge and help you cross it. Know us. Know. Throw out assumptions that lead to judgment. You don't know. We have no idea the battle someone has fought before we ever lay eyes on them. Replace judgment with kindness and curiosity. Empathy? <laughs> Empathy is a superpower. Use it like you're a superhero. Go be Superman and throw empathy on people. Offer a smile or a helping hand if needed. Cross the bridge. Encouragement, even from a total stranger, can make the difference between someone feeling cut off from the world around them or still feeling connected. Choose your words wisely. Speak life. When you are having a conversation with someone, use words that will add value to anyone who can hear them. You never know who's in your audience. <laughs> Take advantage of the opportunity you have to celebrate greater victories than the majority ever could when you know us. Us. We are you. You are us. If not now, perhaps one day. Life can change in an instant. See yourself in us, in others. <laughs> October 15th, 1997, the day I'll never forget, the journey that has changed me in powerful ways. Today is a day I hope you never forget, a day you will remember 
that you learned about the loss of normal. You've been given a bird's eye view. The day that you learned about this silent and mysterious grief that impacts millions around you. The day you were reminded of the power you have to change the lives of others. Use that power and please use it well. I'm going to end with giving you one final quest. Now that you've seen the canyon and you know how to build a bridge, will you build one? Will you lace up your shoes and cross the bridge? Will you come alongside us? Will you walk with me, with my son? If you're willing, rise to your feet, everyone. Stand up, stand up. Stand with me by committing to being a bridge builder, to build bridges that are built through kindness and curiosity, encouragement and respect. Carry attitudes that are rich with acceptance across every bridge you build. And above all, see the humanity first in every person you encounter. It has been and always will be our greatest common bond. United, we are strong and we can change our future. Remember this moment, this new perspective. Take it with you and go build bridges. Thank you.